Because Gino sucked all the energy out of you guys. <laughs> it's not fair. And I'm telling my son again, I'm never going on after Gino. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Okay. Man, I was looking at that stuff on the board over here. And I said, man, I'm screwed. <laughs> all right, so anyway, I want to thank all of you for being here. I haven't had a chance to say hello to all of you, hug you, kiss you, and all that other stuff. Although, as I was walking down the stairs, I said to Sandy, because she had been in my house for like three days, God Almighty, no, but <laughs> house, house, house for three days, and I said, oh, Sandy, honey, how are you? Haven't I seen you before? She said, yeah, didn't I sleep with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my wife? Oh, my God. So anyway, um, it's so much fun to be here, as always. And, you know, second time around is always better than the first, because I know where the heck I'm going. You know, like, it wasn't even any thought, but my wife, mm, that's an issue. That's a real, you know, because her father used to come to my house, and I'll tell you about her father. Her father was a doctor. He was, a, he was uh, uh, in World War II. He was a flight surgeon. He did all that stuff, right? And um, something happened to his ability to figure out where he's at. And what would happen is, is he would be driving to my house, and then he would go like, hey, I don't, where do you live again? I'm lost. But he had that unique, you know, ability to figure it out, but he got lost a lot. And my wife, she carried on, she has that gene. <laughs> and so when we go on the cruises, she says, okay, I'm here now. Where, the only thing she know, her and Jim, where's the casino? <laughs> and you know what? She has that ability to find it. And, but to our room? Now, where do I go to get to our room now? Right? And we used to have, on many of the cruises, different colored carpet on the port side and on the starboard side. And that made it easy. She said, I go to the blue. I don't go to the red. Right? <laughs> and then, more recently, they're all the same color. But anyway, so it is so much. Uh, so second time around, we all know where we're at. Uh, we all know that we brought a lot of dollars. Dollars are good stuff, particularly when you're at the pool. You give somebody a dollar, they come back right away for the next dollar. Am I right, Petey? Uh -huh. Yeah, Elaine said, she, she, uh, I guess like Thursday, she says, I got the dollars. You know, it's like her passport. <laughs> I, got, I got like 50 hours. Oh, that's good, that's good. It is going to be gone before you know it, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, well, uh, so, so I prepared today. Uh, I really wanted to kind of, I, 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 I have this ability to have this overview. I have like this inside, foresight, outside, oversight, and I can see what you guys are doing. And I will tell you that some of you are like lighting it on fire, 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 fire. And you hear me talk about fire today quite a bit, you know. So, um, and then, and then, as we bring in new people, um, we see that same kind of ignition. They get ignited, and then sometimes they, you know, become a rocket, and sometimes they fizzle out. But it is what it is. And so we can't take the responsibility for people being successful, but we certainly can take the responsibility of guiding them. You know, holding on the handlebars and the bicycle seats, that type of thing. So, today is kind of like that. Just, and being three days with Sandy, I was asking her, and I said, so what should I talk about? You know, because I talk about so many things, what should I talk about? She says, oh, talk about the basics. Talk about duplication. Talk about, you know, like how she got here, in a sense. How Rhonda got here, in a sense, okay? How all of you got here, in a sense, because those that didn't get here, in a sense, they didn't get it. They're someplace else, okay? So I'm going to do that. And uh, a lot of times, like, for example, last night, um, it was really a great football game. And the players didn't lose it. It was the coach. So if you look at the coach from San Francisco, right, and they're winning 20 to 10, and he calls a play a run play, right, um, which is great. They score five yards, and the next two plays he calls were passes. And both were dropped. Right? So what does it tell you? He had the magic formula. He just didn't follow it. Because he could have stretched that play out six or seven minutes. This was like 12 minutes left in the game. And he called two of the wrong plays. And so sometimes, like when you're on the sideline and you can see people, you know, 
Hopefully they make the right call so they can score the touchdowns. And really all they needed to do was to go with a five minute or, or, or a four minute, um, you know, uh, whether or not they scored or whether or not they kicked a field goal, they still could have stretched that out and only gave them four minutes to finish up. And they didn't have the confidence at that point if it would have been like that. And Mahone, you know, if you looked at what he did, he just is thinking on his feet. He is an improviser. He reads, you know, what's the sign of a true champion? It's just like a missile. A missile is heading off to hit its target. And in that missile has a nose cone that is full of electronics and radar telling it it's not going in the right direction. You got to go right, you got to go left. And a missile never goes directly to the target. It goes right, left, right, left, and finally hits its target. That was uh, Mahone. It was right, left, right, left, right, left. And then you go, <coughs> that, you know, how many passes did it do like this? Right? You know, seven yard, nine yard, 11 yard pass. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now when there's 11 guys coming after me. <laughs> you know? So really, if, so what happens is a, a, a breakfast of champions is feedback. Just like the radar, the more feedback you get, the more you can adjust your, co uh, your, 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 your goal and your direction. And what do coaches do? They give you feedback. You're doing good. You're not doing good. Okay, you're doing good. You're not doing good. Hey, shut up, cry baby. What did the coach tell you? TL, tough luck. You're on this team. You got to take it. Isn't that right? Yes. So there's no easy path as long as you've got a coach. Tigers got a coach. Oh, these guys, amazing. You know what their payroll is? Well, they got a putting coach. They got a mental coach. They got a swing coach. They got a little, little, little I mean, they got a coach to, to carry the bag. It's crazy. But you know what? They realize that in order to be a champion, you need help. You need help. And so, pretty much what are you saying here? You know, 2020, once in a lifetime opportunity, you have discovered a gold mine. Learn how to dig it. For it is, if it's to be, it's up to me. But I gotta be able to accept the feedback. I guess they're not picking on me, they're really telling me the truth. In school, which, which I'm involved in also, um, and I put th three things up on the board when they first start. First thing I put is FIL. I said batteries will not start, Cars will not start, tires will wear out, and so what you have, and, and babysitters won't show up, and you have to have a backup plan. Because there is going to be on every plane at least six different options to land the plane. If button number one doesn't work, button number two will, or button number three or four or five or six, and finally you land the plane. You know, landing the plane is not fun if you don't have the wheels done. And so, in uh, school, we say FIO, figure it out. Be proactive in advance and uh, kind of like predetermine all the things that aren't going to go right. So you can fix it on the fly. The next thing we put down, I put down, is TL, right? I said, I got four daughters, I saw them all cry. Many times. I got a wife, I mean, oh, don't you know what I do? <laughs> yeah. Woo. my fault right? that, was, that was the old John you know, we've been married 56 years right? 56, yeah. give her the applause <laughs> the first 55 she was married to John not a fun guy no 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 Everything was more important, da 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 But now she's married to her second husband. Woo! Yeah, yeah. and that's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so. So, in any case, that, 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 yeah, that, that T, right, 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 right. That TL, right? Um, I have seen stylists, and I'm going to a lot of salons, as you know, right? And I saw them all cry. So when you come into my office and you start to cry, I, I do two things. Number one, I give you a box of Kleenex, and number two, I leave the room. Because <laughs> we're not having a pity party, okay? It's TL is for tough love. In order to survive, in order to actually be successful in whatever you want to do, it's not going to be perfect. 
So you've got to prepare for that. And then the last thing is I call it WC. I remember my father one time, I went to, I went to their house uh, for Thanksgiving. My mother-in-law was noted for not being a good cook. So most times I didn't relish the fact that we were going to go there. Right? But in any case, this time was a double Thanksgiving day. It means I got my mother's Italian dress stuffing. I got the, you know, I, I, I was going to get that stuff, and I was going to have to eat whatever her mother prepared. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if it was going to be turkey or ham. You know, I never knew. You know, like one time she said, you're going to have the best Christmas Eve you're going to ever have in your life. My Christmas Eves were 60 people all trying to talk over each other, right? Cog games going on over here, over there. Clams and oysters and you name it, right? It was like a feast. So she said, the best ever. So my, my cousin married her sister, my sister-in-law, right? And so we were just talking. What do you think? Is it going to be lobster? Is it going to be filet mignons? What's it going to be? Well, we got there, and let me tell you what it was. It was six salads, <laughs> all in one kind of casserole. Ham salad, turkey salad, egg salad. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> so let me get back to Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving, you know, Dallas always played football on on, uh, uh, Chris, uh, on on Thanksgiving, and so my father had this little private den. It was really like his little room. It wasn't it wasn't as big. It was probably that table to about here, and that was his place. And no, none of the kids went in there. Nobody, and maybe there was one extra seat. So uh, he was at dinner. He was at dinner, and we were, we were eating. And and ten minutes into dinner, he said, "Excuse me." And he got up and he left. And he went into the, uh, you know, watch TV. I said, man, this is a screwy family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, you, know, you know, we normally write things that we're thankful for, and we pass it around the table, and we read it all. Yeah, he's gone. Right? So, so, so I looked at her mother, and her mother said, well, you know, Doc had a, had a, had a patient die this morning, one of his, his long-term patients, and he's very upset. Okay, so I said, oh, I got it, I got it. Right? So, as I say to these students, I said, we see your workmanship. We know how good you guys are. But when you have to come to us and you have to say, I have to take a leave of absence. I have to have an LOA. In essence, what you're really saying is, I'm going to be a be-backer, because that's what they do say. Ah, but Mr. Ray, I'm, I'm coming back, you know. Well, the fact of the matter is, only two out of ten do. Because life takes them in a different path. Or the reason that they left is the same reason they won't come back, in most cases. Okay? And because of that, right, I say, well, WC, when I put it on the board, WC means we care more than you'll ever know the day that you say you can't come to school anymore. Wow. Because it's taking you right out of this industry. All right? And that's the same thing I think about those newbies that come in to our organization. And the same reason, in some cases, that they come in and then they start to flutter away are the reasons that if they were proactive and they had that TL, that tough love, and they, and they had that FIO up in front, right, that they would make adjustments and be able to stay with the team. Right? Because that's the most important thing. Members for life. All right, so let's see if this works the way it's supposed to. Uh, why did it so hard? Here we go. Okay, where are you going to be? 12, 31, 2000, uh, 20, 20. Right? Establish your goals, 2, 3, 20, today, this week. And why do I put today? Because it's not really today. It's the whole week. You've got a week to plan. And what am I going to plan? I'm going to plan my spiritual life. I'm going to plan my personal life. I'm going to plan my professional life. i got time on my hands here. Johnny's telling me about a, a, a 17, 16 hour trip for 170 bucks and the bus leaves at 7.30 in the morning, comes back at 11 o'clock at night, and, he, and nobody wants to, oh, I don't blame you. Man, that's almost like getting married. I'm just here, for, I just want to have some fun. Right? <laughs> and so, so what I will do is that when you have this excess time, write the things down. You either get your journal out or, or get your calendar. I use, uh, I use Stephen's calendar, but you know, write things down because it's going to be very helpful. Because 
it's, it's like this. It's almost like a sweet 16. I write 16 things down and then I pair them together, right? And then I wind up with eight. And then I wind up those eight and I get it down to four. Because I'm looking for the biggest ROI, return on investment, and ROT, return on time. Right? And then I get it down to two. And those two I'm doing right away. You know, actually, one will be ahead of the other, but i got to get that done. Because that's going to give me the biggest return. And so that's what I really would do. I'd probably write eight or 16 things down and then start pairing them off. And then when you leave here, you've got a plan. You know exactly what you want to do, where you want to go, and you've got a timeline to do it here. So, dream of the deadline. Got to have deadlines. Get out your calendar, your new best friend. Fill it out. Start today for 11 months left to 2020. No, now is the time for you to be creative and dream. Then put it on your calendar, writing it down some show them how to make it happen and commit it and put it into stone. Um, I always like to work backwards. Like if I had to leave here at 10 o'clock tonight and I had a bunch of stuff to do, I have to figure out how much time it's going to take me that I'm going to actually be ready to go at 10 o'clock. So many times I will work myself backwards. Well, one hour for this and two hours for that and 15 minutes for that and whatever and now I got it down. And I got to cut time out of here to work over there. So. That's kind of like what I would be thinking about for the year, particularly things that you want to get done. And work at least two months out and back up daily actions so you can see the timeline. Back up daily actions. That would be, you know, good. All right, next. Where can you be in a 12, 31? <laughs> Ten months. Well, just went the same way. Oh, I guess I'm going the wrong way. No, no, that's it. Work backwards, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I didn't go that way. But, ooh, well. Okay, a list of those actions can be created on one, on one sheet of paper. Most important actions, book the time now, personal, business, professional, health, spiritual. Building a salon, building a staff, building a team of educators, top of mind, priorities. What is the uh, results you need? And list it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. When you are operating in a two and a one, give, you know, a three or a four, when in doubt, job it out. Delegate it. Because fours, you know, are $10 an hour jobs. You know, twos are $8 an hour jobs. And don't get yourself stuck into doing $8 an hour stuff. You know, because somebody else can do it a lot better for you for a lot less money. I have the same problem because I think I can fix everything. There's no doubt about it. And I know how long it's going to take me to fix it until I start fixing it. And here's what happens. It takes me three times as long, it costs me three times as much, right? And I have three times as, uh, as much aggravation. And then I say, why do I do this? I, I, I got to get into the habit of getting somebody else to take care of this crap. So here's a funny story. I have a cement patio that leads to the water, okay? And the water, I have a seawall. So the cement patio stops right at the edge of it. Now, it had a nice coating of latex paint that when it chipped, it was easy to paint. My guy who's been with me 10 years, he gets, you know, does a lot of great things, he decides he's going to paint it with epoxy. So he paints over the latex with epoxy. The epoxy is strong as hell. But the underlying uh, lying paint is not. So it still chips. And now he went a coat uh, a, a shade darker. And now I had these splotches everywhere. And it's OK for me. Is it bothering me? Yeah. But it's bothering my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Bothers my wife. And I will tell you, for the last year and a half, as it continually eroded, I went out and bought this big carpet. Outdoor carpet. It was like 10 by 10, monster carpet, right? <coughs> Although this thing is 30 by 10, I plopped it right in the middle of where the problem was. And it, and it was, oh, it looks nice, until it started to chip on the outside. Right? So then I said, I know what we do. I've done this before. We go out and we get the scrubber, right? And then we take this, this, this diamond blades and we just go over it and we get it all up, particularly Jeez. like carpet, adhesive, whatever, right? And I got one coming over, and one's about this big, but he's strong. He's probably about mid, mid to late 50s, right? right? So I get one coming over. So, one, you and I, we're going to do this. We're going to rent it. We're going to blah, 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 right? 
So I said, Ron, uh, Juan, you, you run these scrubbing machines before, right? This is high power. He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fine. So I said, well, let me show you how to do it. So I, I first of all, I put on the pad, I get this thing going, and I'll tell you what, it was tough as nails. It was, I mean, I mean, to hold on to this one because of these blades on concrete, it was like unbelievable. So I got I got to really position it like that. So he says, yeah, we got all of this to do, and I got to go to a meeting, right? So we, we get started, and I said, now Juan, here, you do it. Well, he did it. He almost wound up in the water, <laughs> right? That thing actually took him off his feet and he went, boom! He did a 360, he wound up in the same place. Then he started, and his legs were up in the air. <laughs> yes, and then she was looking out the window. Oh my God! He thought he was playing in the water. So I, uh, listen, I'm not going to make this meeting, okay? <laughs> so for six hours, uh, right, I had to stand there with this machine going, and he, he had a power washer, so he was going behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you this, guys, you better drink celery juice. <laughs> if you drink celery juice, it'll take away the inflammation. And I figured the next morning I'm going to wake up, my hands are going to be all swollen, I'm going to have all kinds of issues with my stomach holding that thing like this, and all the rest of this stuff. I didn't have a pain, I didn't have anything. So celery juice, and Elaine will tell you how to juice it, okay? We, eight, ten inches, eight ten, uh, eight, ten ounces a day. So when in doubt, job it out. I should have done it, didn't do it, wasted a whole day, but it looks nice. She likes it. That's all that counts. Okay, OMG, get me on the 2021 cruise odyssey of the sea, biggest ship ever, right? Get 12 OMGs, sell one a day, five a week, end of week one, order another 12, more in stock, clients will start to repeat, four to five weeks, buy in more, sell two to 300 cans, Make ten dollar profit per can, two thousand to three thousand dollars on the cruise. I will guarantee you. Will you have one? Okay. Yeah. This is this this is you heard about Miracle Oil. We have all introduced that. Uh, this is Miracle Texturizer. If you have not tried it, you have to try it. It is unbelievable. Matter of fact, Pete. Your hair, you'll start looking like Einstein. That's how big it'll be, right? John, yeah. I used it on mine because I, and I have a lot of hair. Yeah. I was like, oh, MG. Oh, right, right. I'm like, I can't use it on mine. Right, right, right. Less is more, though. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. And uh, if, if, you like the, if you like the texture of hair the second day, this gives it to you right away. Yeah. Okay? Yes, Rod. Yeah. And I scrunched it and my curl went up and I said, oh good, I don't have to do anything. Why do I order four cases? Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. And you, you will see. You will see. We've had people do that. Yeah. It's amazing. So what I'm, what I'm actually doing is I'm giving you an outline of preparing how to, how to actually set that goal because you know that's what you want to go on that trip. You want to be able to financially afford it. You want a way to generate the income. You want to make your clients happy, and you want to actually have something new and different and interesting to introduce to them, which makes you happy, right? So that's a win, 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 win. Yeah, and you can shake, shake that up too. Okay, now let me tell you about a fella by the name of Leon Daniels. Remember Leon? Leon was brought into the system. He, he sub, uh, subsequently retired about uh, 20 years ago. Lynn brought him in. So Leon used to do this. <clears throat> we would introduce a new product. Let's say we introduced FIT, because at one time, 10 years ago, we introduced FIT. And so what he would do is he would say, I only want two bottles of whatever you introduce. He would have the two bottles on his station. He would begin to use one of them. And then he would say to your, his client, how do you like that? And, well, yeah, it feels good. Well, this is the newest and the latest. Unfortunately, I don't have it available. I will be getting it in. It's on quota right now, and so probably in two weeks to a month, I'm going to get it in. 
We'll be happy to call you when it comes in. And I don't know, is one going to be enough for you? Uh, well, you put me down for two, Leon, all right? When he would place his first order, it would be four dozen, six dozen, because he had all of these pre-sold. He was like a, a rainmaker. And if he, if he liked it, that is, right? Now, there's some products we shipped to him. He said, no, it's not for my clientele. But when it was right, he actually would do that whole introductional process and get them committed before it ever came in. So, you know, for those of you who do have it, um, you know, it's something that you guys can think about. All right. Um, and they'll tell you, I guess, when it's coming in and all that other good stuff. Okay. Let me go to the next Chris one. Knows. Chris knows. Chris knows. Yeah, she, she probably stepped out. Okay, so what's it do in? Is it coming in the way of the in the office on Thursday? Oh, good. Woo! All right. I can't tell you enough about Odyssey of the Sea, but I will in a little while. All right. So, scoreboard. Air earned more this year, 2020, than 2019, and you'll have a happier new year. If you got a W-2 that showed you that you made the same amount of money as you made the last year, if you were an employee of a company, you might not be happy. Because, you know, making the same amount doesn't make you feel fulfilled or appreciated. So, you want to make more. Your best scoreboard measured by the numbers. How much by when, right? And I want to exceed what 2019 is. And I always say to people, make sure the numbers are real. They're not fabricated. In other words, oh, I want to make $150,000 a year. Well, if you made 50 this year, there ain't no way you're going to make 150 unless there's something drastically different. So what would be the, the acceptance? The acceptance is double digit. I don't like anything under double digit. I want to see 10% or better. And some of you guys can pull off 15, 20, 30. I've seen it happen. For a long time, I was 20% up every year while we were at the school program, right? And more. Okay, real numbers, not touchy-feely. If you do more than 2019, most likely you will have earned more. If you do more, you'll earn more, do more, and make more. I remember when we were, if, if you force the activity, you guarantee results. If you guys just do nothing but classes and you want to enroll people, you'll enroll more people than you did the year before. If you don't do the classes, you won't. Now, it's going to be a crapshoot. Some of you will have a whole house full of them, and some of you will have two or three. But you know what? Sometimes two or three is better than a whole house full because at least i got time to concentrate. Yes. i got time to share. We can sit around the campfire. We can build a relationship. So it's okay. It's okay to have less, not necessarily more, in terms of people that go there. All right. If you build it, they will come. Can you see it? Can you see it? Just don't wish. you got to be able to see it. Right? Because if I'm running, the, I already know, if I'm in the Olympics and I'm running the 400 meters, I already know what's waiting for me at the end of the line if I cross first. It's called a gold medal. And if I sleep, dream, think, and see myself with the gold medal around my neck, there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to work extremely hard to get it. Extremely hard. Because I know the value of it. And I'm willing to put in the effort and the energy to get it. So if you guys start thinking about this cruise, and you can see that big ship in your mind, I know you're going to get there, okay? So only if you envision it, if you ingest it, if you digest it, if you visualize it, if you internalize it, you will absolutely realize it. And only you can forecast what your success is going to be. In order to be successful, you want to forecast your success. Because Muhammad Ali always said it, I am the greatest. When he's 21 years old, I want to see the fight on big screen TV, pay for, at the Aragon Ballroom in Chicago, I paid $25 to get a ticket for it. He and I are the same age. I had seen him fight when he was in the Golden Gloves. So I knew, and I seen him on TV in, the, in uh, the Olympics, so I knew who I wanted to go see, right? And what would he say? I, I sting like a bee and I flow like a butterfly because I am the greatest. And nobody believed him because he was 21 years old and he was fighting a guy that just got out of prison, you know, five years before that was rippling muscle. And he was, uh, he was a big Mike Tyson, and uh, his name was Sonny Liston. They called him a bear, and they said this kid cannot beat him. And he danced his way, and he pecked his way, and he jabbed his way into the seventh round to when Sonny Liston couldn't see anymore, right? You know, as simple as that, because the bum rush that he would do, he would just dance away from him. So, 
Only you can do it because you've got to believe that you can do it. And then you've got to broadcast it. You've got to take ownership of it. I always say, like for example, um, whatever your goal is, if you tell other people, they're going to hold you accountable. Right. They say, okay, would you say you go? I know what it is. Well, what is it? I can't tell you. Okay, well, most likely you're not going to achieve it. You're not even going to come close. Because by Valentine's Day, which is going to be the 14th of February, 95% of all of our New Year's resolutions have been broken. Okay? Can I ask you a question? Yes. How much do you feel like Instagram is a huge part of growing business? Uh, uh, well, first of all, I think that social media is a huge part of our business. And I think that there's a thing, though, that you have to be very aware of, and it's called monetization. you got to be able to monetize. Uh, in other words, I don't care how many friends you have. i got 20. I got 29,000 friends on my school Facebook page. 29,000 people following us, okay? I got to be able to monetize that. Because it took a lot of time and energy and effort to be posting and all that other stuff. Now, do I see an ROI return on, on time and an ROI? Uh, yeah, I do. But it's coupled with a lot of other things like AdWords and um, various different kinds of website, uh, you know, stuff and blogs. There's a lot of stuff stuff involved in this whole big web out there. And, um, you know, I don't know it all, but I try to get people that do know it, and then they share it with me, and then I think I know it. And then sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. But I'm a believer of throwing a lot of stuff on the wall. I'm not a believer of just, just shooting it like this. It doesn't work that way. I am, I am right now, um, I'm on, a, on a, a, a cusp of the most inquiries I've ever had in my entire life in my school categories. The most. Not a day goes by where I don't have 15 to 20 people inquiring. I mean, it's just like crazy numbers, right? And, and when people ask me, what is it? I said, it's everything that we've ever done and everything that we're doing right now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put more investment behind it. Because I'm afraid to withdraw it. Right. Now I had a friend from Subway, and he was he had Fredonomics. You know heard about Ray, Reagan and you know Ronnie Reagan had uh, Reaganomics, right? right? Well, he had Fredonomics, right? The minute he was doing really, really well, 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 he said, "Well, I'm doing so well now, I can pull back." Okay, and it seemed to work for him, but it doesn't it doesn't work for me. I'm too afraid. So I just want to you know push a little bit more. Right? Yeah. Okay. But good question. Here's the example. I was going to talk about this. Okay. So um, this is forecasting your future. So in uh, 1984, Fred DeLuca Subway had 200 locations. I met him. I just came back from uh, from Tokyo, and um, I met him at the uh, Sheridan. Um, uh, the what was it? It was the Hollywood Sheridan. And um, it was in, in Hollywood, um, not too far away from Universal Studios.